Well, good day. Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick and you know it. This is the outdoors, baby. Up at Baker's Narrows Lodge in Northern Manitoba to do pike fishing again, because I love me some pike fishing. I know there's been a little bit on the channel lately, but I said I was gonna do some pike fishing when it came to August, so that's what we're doing. We're fishing Lake Athapapascow today world-renowned pike fishing. And I say we, because I have a special guest who I'll introduce here in a little bit, Mac Mulligan, or maybe I'm his guest. He guides here at Baker's Narrows and he uh, does quite well. And he's, how, how should I say this? He's still a young puppy. He's 19 years of age. He has this gorgeous boat, which we'll go through here in a little bit as well. But he puts his clients on big walleye, big pike, big lakers. Obviously, a lot of it's year dependent, right? Like lake trout, certain time of the year, pike, certain time of the year, walleye, etc. But both open water and ice fishing. So I'm excited to have him in the boat today. Hopefully, he's not too nervous to be on camera. He's a, a soft-spoken gentleman, but he is a fishing fanatic. We sat in my boat last night, and he just drilled me with like a thousand questions. But the funny thing is, I want. I want questions too, right? So it's like back and forth all day. So who knows, there could be a lot of that in this video, us asking each other questions and stuff like that. But that's how you develop new strategies, patterns, techniques, all that stuff is talking with other really good anglers and figuring that stuff out, right? Like that's what I learned in the whole guiding system for 18 years, which I still plan on going back to, to guiding yet here in the summertime once we fire up again. But the more you talk with knowledgeable anglers, the more that you learn. So super long intro already. There's gonna be a little bit more down at the dock where we're meeting Mac, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about him now and not in front of him and embarrass the poor guy. So let's do it, pike fishing. I'm so pumped. Well, on the dock at Baker's, there's Mac. Mac, come say hi. I, I already did an introduction for you. What's so going on? So you're good to go. This is Mac, like I said, guides up here at Baker's Narrows. And look at his boat. What, what is it, a 2075? Yeah, 2075 Pro Guide. Loaded. Altera, helixes, dialed. Said he just put a downrigger on it? Yep. He is, uh, boy. <laughs> I think I'm starting to think maybe we should be taking this boat. <laughs> Look at the room. Amazing. You want to come fishing style, baby. You know right where to find here. me. You know where to find him. <laughs> right here, baby. <laughs> We're going to put him in awkward situations all day. <laughs> Love he, it. He promised me like three 50 inch pike today. That's a lot. I was like, are you sure? He's like, oh yeah. He's like, maybe two at the least, but at least, you know, a couple. Bare minimum. Bare minimum, 50s. No, <laughs> let's do it. it. It looks like we have a gorgeous day. Amazing. Pike fishing. Stoked. Are you giving her? Or what? You're good. All yeah. Right. I want you to catch the first one. Man, I was looking at the guide schedule this morning. Mm -hmm. The last day I guide this year. Already? Oh yeah. What? I think I'm just another pretty face or what? the heck? That's the second, no, no, no. I get the first fish. Are you kidding me? I don't have to net that one, do I? No, I'll grab him. That's amazing. Oh, oh perfect. perfect. Quick release. Well, that was easy. <laughs> first cast, Matt catches like a 33 inch pike. No big deal, just shake it off at the boat. We'll talk about the lake shore a little bit. I, 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 okay, stop. I haven't even thrown a cast yet. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, fine. I'll just keep shaking them off for you. Is, is that how pike fishing always is here? Like, that's easy. Well, okay, I'm going to finally get a cast. <laughs> See, Max, like, just cast way out there. Well, he casts in the money stuff. <laughs> Come on, are you kidding me? That's that's three fish oh, and like five casts. This one looks a little bit better, maybe. No, it's still decent, eh? Uh yeah, that's like a 36 inch fish, 35 inch fish. What's going on, Clayton, man? <laughs> this is embarrassing. I think I need to go home. Yeah, show it off to the camera. What camera's on? This one? Yeah, they're all on. Oh, much going on. on right here. That one you got to get close to because it's a GoPro. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll turn the. Right on. When you when you catch a real fish, I'll turn the main <laughs> camera around for you. Yeah, that's nice. See you, that's buddy. uh, as they have three fish like in five casts. You want to switch your odds or what? Yeah, I'm thinking so. Max caught more fish than I've made casts so far. 
I think this is your fish. Is it huge? Oh. Why do I get these ones? That's not fair. I, I want bigger. Okay, well, I guess there's always next year. Next year. It's always next year, they say. Matt catches three nice fish and that's what I catch. Awesome. That's okay. Oh, let's go. A bit hammered. Doesn't feel big though. Doesn't feel big, but it doesn't feel like tiny either. Oh, oh yeah. No. So, no. 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 <laughs> the old spiraler. No. Yeah. Every time he spirals, he feels a little bit bigger. How are you pulling that drag out? You're small. You're small. Look how green that mouth is on him. It's weird, hey? Yeah. Yeah, is that common up here? Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Do you know why anything about that? No, not really. Oh, there's a but, decent one. Nice. Nice. Not a boy. I just got the head camera going. Good work. Right at the boat, man. That's awesome. I just heard you say, oh, there's a decent one. I look over and it's on. Smoked it. Deadly. I'll maybe, maybe we'll net this one. Yeah, it's a netter, we'll I'd net say. We'll net this one. Get out from under the boat. The spot locked us here, so the boat should turn us. Nice, right in the side of the head. He hit it right at the boat, man. That's epic. That's a good one. That's, That's what we're one. after, a little bit more like that size. It's a nice like fat it. one, too. Like it. Like it. That's a gooder. That a boy? Right on, man. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> nice. Sweet. That's bigger than I thought, actually. That's a nice one. Fish. I had to step back. That's right. Yeah, on. come up to the camera and show it yeah. off just a little bit. Deadly. Right on. We'll get a quick measure on it, but it's been a little bit slower for us in terms of numbers. Super fast. Or sorry, in terms of size, we've caught a lot of fish. But yeah, get a measure on it and we'll get her back. Hit right boat spot, boat side, just as I turn my head. 39 camera. and three quarters. 39 and three quarters. That's an awesome fish. Super fast. Nice. Yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's so fat. It's definitely bigger than what I thought it was at first. Look how that's wide its awesome. back is, eh? Yeah. Nice. Right on. Nice. Good one, man. Yeah, buddy. Max going to tell you his reasoning for this, but this is a 3D hybrid. It's, I think it's called a 3D hybrid pike, but he's got a little weight on it. Is it tungsten or just a lead just weight? Just tungsten weight, yeah. Tug well, explain it. What, what's the whole so reason for it? Basically, I add the tungsten weight on here. So when you're reeling this through the water, you can pause it and then it'll dip down and the tail will have a really good action to it. So I find a lot of time, this time of year especially on the pause is big for these pike because they're kind of lethargic. So it helps me out. So you find like during like the fall time, like yeah. the- Whenever you get a cold front, I find the pause becomes a bigger, bigger uh, player in the game. And bigger baits too, like this yeah. time of year too? I like bigger baits. Like you said a lot, you were using like uh, blades and stuff a lot earlier yeah. in the summer, yeah, but now kind of- Yeah, like uh, fast, fast and like close to the surface. Yeah. But this time of year, I like to let stuff get down there a little further, low and slow. Low and slow, yeah. low and slow, there we go. I've never used that one before, low and slow. How how heavy is that weight? This is a three eighths. A three eighth eight, eight ounce. Three eighth ounce. And like, I, like I'll use quarter ounce too, and a little bit lighter too, but with the heavier weight, it just sinks it down that much faster. Cause right now we're in like 13, 14 feet of water. Yeah. So getting it down there is kind of crucial. That's really cool. And you do that on your line throughs and stuff too? Yeah. Just use a bullet sinker instead yeah. or? Yeah, I just add it right in the line. I'm gonna have to try that. See how I talked about earlier in the day when I was like doing the intro, the intro that it's really cool for me because I get to go out with somebody that's also an experienced fisherman, somebody who pays a lot of attention and puts a lot of effort into it. And I get to learn new cool tricks too. So that's pretty epic. You just taught me something. You taught, taught me something. I love it. Unreal. So like Max says, that bait right now, just let it sink down with that weight. The nose just dropped straight down. That's really cool. I like that. And it doesn't kill the action of the bait at all. No. Yeah, you can still do a steady retrieve. That's cool. Just straight across. <laughs> I had 20. Oh, <laughs> okay. This is a different fish than that first one, Mac. No, it's not, man. <laughs> this is that first one that hit me. This is bigger. <laughs> is it actually big? It's not small. It's not small. It's like a, it's probably a mid thirties, but I think we'll net it though. Anyway, okay. here, I'll let you get the net. And maybe I'll come to this side. <laughs> Am I netting on this side? Yeah, that's a nice fish. That's nice. That's nice. Nice. 
That's a good fish for you. Oh, I caught it. It's a good fish for me, I yeah, guess. Yeah, by accident. Yeah. Look, the hook's already out. I didn't catch it by accident. No, it accidentally bit your hook. got mistaken. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thought it was yours or what? Yeah. Okay, well, it's finally my time to score a nice pike for the day. Solid fish. Not as big as Max, but that's okay. We won't measure it, so I can just say it's a, what was yours, 39 and a quarter? Yeah, yeah. I think this is about a 39 and a half give or take you know a little bit so awesome it was a fun strike oh freaked easy he's mad i didn't even have to really release him see ya so i stayed with the 4d perch shad i did fool around with that booker tail for a little bit but went back to this i asked mac said what do you want me to fish in this next spot he brought me to and he told me the perch shad so i guess i kind of owe that one to him i'll show you something cool about these baits so this is the one that I was using the last couple videos and it looks just like it's only beat up a little bit, but as soon as you start like pushing on it and pulling on it, you can see all the teeth marks and how it's just got absolutely mauled. This plastic's pretty good. They hold up quite well. The odd time you'll have one where you'll get the tail bit off, but for the most part, I've been really lucky and they seem to last like the whole day. But this is the one I used in the last couple videos. I just decided to retire it for now and use a new one. Mm, this one feels good. This is a good fish. Are you sure? Uh, he's down in the weeds now, but they were big, vicious head shakes. Didn't look like a huge No, it doesn't. Start. It's not small. Okay. It, I know it doesn't. I, I agree. It did not look big out there. He's got me down in the weeds right now. This is a good fish. It's not small. Like, they were big, like, big wide head shakes i agree i i know what, I, what you saw didn't too look big. it did not look big at all it's not it's, it's just it's a nice one yeah like i know i did wasn't gonna say it was giant but it was like it wasn't uh it wasn't a couple of the fish size we just caught anyway mm -hmm. we've been like hammering fish here the last little bit Pretty good numbers, nothing like crazy size. Like I'd say that's a 36. 36? Yeah, 36. But we're definitely getting into it a little bit right now. Kay. This is awesome. You hold this. You, I'm spot lock, you keep fishing. Okay, I'm gonna cast the way yeah. and just jump. You keep fishing, because it's happening right now. I told you, man, this is a money spot. You did tell me this was gonna happen. Look at that, see Mac even took my spot now, because he's like, you're on him, Clayton. <laughs> right there, 35 and three quarter, beautiful fish. We're catching them now. Well, maybe I'll throw a few casts right there too. Max said this side too. So he basically said, just come down the middle of this channel, stay away from the edges because that's where most of the action is with the cabbage. We're making like long casts towards the shore to not spook the fish. It is super sunny out. So if we get too close to them, get on top of them, we do risk spooking them. So right now the whole plan of attack is just to stay out in the middle, long, long cast ashore. And my last two fish have both come from pretty far in. Oh, maybe Mac wanted me to cast on this side so I don't fish you. I know what's going on here. No, 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 no. You cast that side, I'll cast this side. Okay, Mac, I got one question for you after we've been doing all this fishing today. And we struggled for quite a long time, I'm not gonna lie. Like it was tough in terms of size. We caught a lot of fish as yep. we went, but we're both so spoiled where we're pulling our hooks away from fish. But what's the advantage to somebody to get a guide when they do come up here instead of trying to do this on their own? Well, if you get a guide, say myself or another guide from the lodge, you're given basically a walk on, walk on the boat, ready to catch fish kind of set up like you come into my boat you have the rods the lures everything's ready to go you can just walk on there in your shorts and shirt and we can go catch fish whereas on your own you're gonna have to do a lot of that learning yourself you're gonna have to find these spots figure out why the fish are there what they're doing there if it's even worth fishing those spots just to shorten that whole learning curve and learning experience into a one day kind of thing Totally, and that makes so much sense because it's like, even everything that we fish today, there's weeds everywhere. And it's like, if you were to come up here and you found this giant weed bed, it's like, how do you know what to fish and what not to fish? So yeah, finding a starting point is yeah, key. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm going to struggle a little bit tomorrow on myself, I, I feel like, you know, it's going to be a little bit tougher day in that sense. You'll find but something, but... I'll find something eventually, but it just, it's definitely... It just takes that, that searching out of the way, and like I said, like just it just makes the experience so much better, in my opinion. Yeah, no, totally. It's the same thing where I guide up north. It's like, it's it's a better experience for the person that's coming up there as a short amount of time. Yeah, if you can fish this lake like 30 times, 40 times in a year, no problem, right? It probably doesn't pay for you to get a guide, but if you're only coming up for three, four days, get a guide for the whole trip. Not even just that one day because you're only gonna start to learn. And then Mac will show you like different techniques and stuff like that. And he has all of these rods in his boat to be able to show you and teach you how to cast big baits. Like, especially your average walleye angler has a lot of smaller gear. You can come up here and use real cool, actual pike fishing gear with big baits and have a lot of fun with yeah, it. So do it, it properly. It pays to have a guide in that sense for sure. Well, as you can see, I'm back at home. Unfortunately, a little bit later that day, I had some boat issues, I had some stalling issues type of thing, which I have now gotten taken care of. Thank you to Regina Marine and Regina Saskatchewan for getting me in quick. I had a computer problem, basically they had to do a reprogram on the Evinrude. It's up and running again though, everything is solid. We honestly caught a pile of fish that day. Not everything made it onto the video, just for the fact that there's always, there's always too much information, or not information, but too much fish footage to always put on there. So I just picked out the best fish from the day. Like I said, we caught a lot more fish, but those are probably the, the most notable fish of the day. Max informed me that um, he still has some availability left for this year as well. Some other guides up there, the pike season's still going, the walleye are, are happening, and the lake trout should be starting soon. I'd say probably in another weekish, the lake trout will be starting to kick off in a, that area. And I was up there last year and did pretty good, caught lots of lakers. I didn't catch anything big, but literally like a couple days after I left, Matt caught a couple really nice lake trout. So they still have some avail availability up there, I'm pretty sure, I believe anyway, give them a shout. And if you don't make it up there this year, consider up there, consider getting up there next year. Pike fishing is so much fun. It's some of my, some of my most memorable experiences in the past and the most explosive fish that I've fished for and that type of thing. So anyways, I'm rambling. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget, get outside.